Hey everyone, um, I am so happy to get to talk to you guys again this week and so happy to um, get to give another talk this week on the Holy Spirit. Um, so if you missed our last Edge session, we really missed having you and um, hope that you'll be able to join us again next week. If you are just a parent who wanted to check in and uh, see what our session was about, awesome possum, we're so glad to have you. Um, and if you're just a stranger who wanted to like hear a little more about the Holy Spirit, um, really glad that you're joining us too. So um, this week our session was called Ignition and it was just another night on the Holy Spirit and it was about the mission of the Holy Spirit um, and how he uh, uses his gifts to help us to uh, fulfill the mission of the church. Um, so like we said last week, uh, the Holy Spirit has been um, one with the Father and the Son since the very beginning of time. He continues to work with them um, and will continue to work with them until the end of time. Um, the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of the promise that God made to Abraham that through his descendants, all nations will be blessed. Um, so God promised that all nations would be blessed with the Holy Spirit. And as baptized Christians, we have received the same gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, so the Holy Spirit was also present um, in all of the Old Testament readings. So every time the people of God had an encounter with God or when they came, but where any individual came to see God in a new way, um, the Holy Spirit was there and was present with them. Um, so he is the one who has the power to enlighten our minds and to help us to understand God better. So um, just, before becoming, just before the coming of Christ, the Holy Spirit propelled John the Baptist to prepare people for Jesus coming as the Messiah. The Holy Spirit also prepared Mary to receive Jesus into her womb. Jesus alluded to the Holy Spirit throughout his life and his ministry. He foretold of the coming of the Spirit at times, and everything he did was in union with the Holy Spirit and the whole Trinity. And just before Jesus died on the cross, he promised that the Holy Spirit would come to us and be with us forever to teach us, to remind us of what Jesus had said, and to help us bear witness to him um, throughout the world. Um, so then Pentecost happened, right? So Jesus dies and the disciples are all scared and they're terrified of um, being persecuted and, and being martyred and being, um, you know, hunted down. And so they come to this room and they're all scared and they're all gathered together there with Mary. And then in comes the Holy Spirit like a rushing wind. And he rests like a flame is what the scripture says. He rests like a flame over each head um, of the apostles and of Mary. Um, and so when they enter in full of fear and filled with um, apprehension, they leave um, in a completely different state. So when they leave, um, they're full, filled with the power and with the confidence to share the gospel. Um, and so that very day, the disciples go out among the nations and they are preaching, preaching, preaching and telling people things in their, um, they're speaking and they're speaking in tongues and it's different languages to everybody who's hearing it. And so it's, they go out and they have all these gifts that the Holy Spirit has given them um, to help them to do the mission of Jesus, to help them go out and spread the good news. Um, so then in the 40 days after the resurrection, Christ breathed on his disciples and gave them the mission, telling them, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Uh, that's John 20, 21 for anyone keeping score at home. Um, and something interesting is that the word breath um, is ruah, and that is also a word used for the Holy Spirit. So if you're like reading the original translations, you can see that Breath and spirit are the same word. So when Jesus breathed on his disciples, it's breathing the Holy Spirit. Um, so from that moment, the church had been given a mission to live the good news of Christ, to share the gospel with the whole world, and to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and so ever since Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has been faithful to the church. Um, it gives Christians the power to believe in Christ, to witness our faith, and to evangelize. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives us strength for this mission by bringing us into deeper communion with God through the sacraments and the community of the church. Um, so one thing is that we sometimes tend to think is like, oh, maybe we have to wait longer and we have to like be older and we have to be more wise and we have to learn more and we have to be more knowledgeable before we can, co we can go out and we can um, share our testimony and share our stories. But um, because of the Holy Spirit, that's not true. Um, the Holy Spirit can come into our lives wherever we are. If we um, just ask for him, come Holy Spirit, we just say, come Holy Spirit, and he will come into our lives wherever we are and help us to um, testify and to, um, to just be the people that we were created to be, um, no matter where we are in our lives, um, no matter how wise we are, how wise we think we are. Oftentimes, that is exactly when the Holy Spirit can use us the best, when we are feeling um, at our weakest, God is strongest in us. 
Um, so if we are baptized, then the Holy Spirit is already dwelling in us. Um, so that presence um, is confirmed, is sorry, is strengthened when we are confirmed. Um, and then it, but it starts at baptism. So in baptism, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, so in our edge night this week, we made these cool little rockets that we used and we, um, they have little, it's hard to explain, I should have brought a prop, but it's a little rocket and you have like a straw and you blow on the straw and it propels the rocket forward. So in the same way that our breath launched the rockets into the air, the Holy Spirit or the breath of God um, wants to launch us into the mission of the church now. So the church tells us time is in the Father's hands. It is in the present that we encounter God, not yesterday, nor tomorrow, but today. Um, and that's from the catechism. The reference is 2659, if anybody wants to look it up. Um, so the Holy Spirit launches us into mission by first helping us to pray. The Holy Spirit teaches us to pray and is part of every movement of prayer. Because he is God, he is able to unite our prayer to the prayer of the church and with the Father and the Son. So we can simply pray something like, come Holy Spirit, um, and the church invites us to pray to the Spirit before and after every important action or event in our lives. Um, so some ways it's easy to do that. If you are still in school, it's easy to maybe like before you take a test to pray, come Holy Spirit, or before you have an audition, or before you um, go to try out for a basketball team or a baseball team or whatever sports team, um, or before you have anything that's important, um, or if you're just an anxious person when you go to start your day, just before you go to school to pray, come Holy Spirit, um, and let the peace of the Holy Spirit fill you and um, give you courage for what you have to do at school. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's the Holy Spirit in a nutshell. That's what we learned this week was just about the mission. Um, so I'll share with you the prayer that we had last night, and then I'll let you be on your way. Uh, so we'll start in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, open my ears to be more attentive to your words. Open my eyes to see where you are leading me. Open my heart to receive the gifts that you want to give me. The gift of wisdom, that I may know God's plan for my life. The gift of understanding, that I may comprehend what God is calling me to do. The gift of knowledge, that I may think more about God and all that he has revealed to us. The gift of counsel, that I may make the best choices that will lead me closer to God. The gift of fortitude, that I may act and do what is right, even if it is hard. The gift of piety, that I may always approach God with the love and respect due to him. The gift of fear of the Lord, that I may always be amazed by the greatness of God and desire to always follow him. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love and guidance. May I never forget that you are always present and working in my life. Amen. All right, so I will send out an email with this link, and with it there will also be the um, discussion questions. So parents, if you just take a couple minutes with your um, teens and go through the discussion questions together, um, it's a good opportunity for you to fellowship and a good opportunity for them to um, break this talk open and help process a little bit. So have a blessed week, and we'll see you next Wednesday.